The final and long-awaited season of Better Call Saul just premiered on the 18th of April. When fans first saw the trailer, they couldn't help but wonder what had come next. The executive producer has teased many Easter eggs, and at this point, we can't really help but speculate many things, especially about Lalo Salamanca. We'll look at this and more in this video. First up, where is Lalo Salamanca? In the beginning of the season, the gruesome upshot of the attack on Lalo's home is seen. Now the police are definitely investigating. Lalo attempts to buy himself some time to escape from the suspicion of the police. He knows that it's Gus who arranged these attacks, and we can clearly see how determined Lalo is to take revenge. He even kills a few innocent villagers to convince the police he's dead. However, after one point at the beginning of the season, we don't really know what Lalo's plan of action is. He's seen getting ready to cross the border from Mexico to the U.S., but before this, he informs Hector that he's still alive. This leads to a quick change in plans for Lalo. Hector manages to change Lalo's mind and tells him that he shouldn't kill Gus directly, but strategically bring his whole ring down and gather evidence that he's the one conspiring against the cartel. Complicated? We know. If you're finding this hard to keep up with, just wait. There are still so many unanswered questions. Now, you must have many questions in your mind at this point. What proof? Where is Lalo headed? How will he find this proof? Also, what evidence is there that he has found this proof in the show? We'll answer all these questions in this video, too. There are many theories and speculations made by fans and viewers, which we'll discuss as well. Next, we have Lalo's proof. All Lalo needs is a solid argument with evidence that Gus is working against the cartel. However, we know as viewers that this really isn't as simple as it sounds. After all, a drug cartel is involved. All this proof has to be gathered secretly and strategically. This is why Lalo disappears in the very beginning. Like we saw, the conversation between Lalo and Hector is pivotal to the plot of this season. And as we mentioned before, Hector agrees with Lalo completely. He should keep his fake death a secret, but suggests an even better plan to take down Gus. To prove that Gus is linked with the mercenary attack somehow, they have to dig a lot deeper. Lalo goes off the grid to find some dirt on Gus. Lalo is convinced that somehow Nacho is involved in this entire ordeal with Gus. In episode 3, he goes back to America with Gus and Mike's help. Not only this, but he also makes a deal with them, pretending to be the mastermind behind their plans. Although risky, he still agrees to this deal in return for his father's safety. He takes the fall for Gus and Mike, acting like he is the one who works for the Peruvian cartel. However, we then find out that he commits suicide in a very shocking turn of events at the end of the episode. Clearly, Lalo has been barking up the wrong tree, and now he's back to square one in looking for some sort of proof. According to the executive producer himself, Lalo needs some kind of proof that Gus is plotting against the cartel, or else his own clan would face the consequences of killing someone as important as Gus. Gus, as we know, is also making money for Don Eladio, and the domino effect this would have could be very serious, causing Lalo's plan to backfire. Now for where will he find this proof and fan theories? Fans also think that Lalo will try to squeeze out as much information as possible from Gus and Mike directly, after realizing that Jimmy could possibly have been linked with them. He could use him as a pawn in order to get more intel, but fans can only wonder how successful getting any information out of Gus and Mike will be, because who knows how much they'll know themselves. Many lives, again, will be compromised, but Jimmy, as we know, is still going to be alive after everything. He's seen making an appearance in Breaking Bad, which is set in the future. We can't help but wonder where Lala will go and to what extent he'll actually go to find proof against Gus to show the cartel. According to executive producer Peter Gould, Lalo hints at his location in the show. He also teases Lalo's location, saying that if fans watch closely at the start of last season, Lala was making a lot of phone calls and trying to figure out what it was, and Werner Ziegler was preparing Gustavo Fring. This will automatically expose Gus Fring's organization. In Hollywood and on Netflix, things are always happening. Here's some trivia and more news you should be keeping up with after Better Call Saul ends. Starting us off is Better Call Saul trivia. Are you a true fan of the show we just talked about? There are many interesting things that you may not have realized. Although true fans of the show know this, Better Call Saul is actually a prequel to Breaking Bad, taking place in 2002. This is six years before the beginning of Breaking Bad. Both of the shows take place in Albuquerque, but it doubles as a filming location for many other places too. For example, the city is a film double for places like Philadelphia and Illinois too. Another interesting fact about the show is that because it's a prequel to Breaking Bad, the producers use digital de-aging techniques to make the characters appear younger. In most scenes, it's pretty subtle, but you might notice it, almost like an Easter egg, in 
Jimmy's flashbacks to Cicero. Better Call Saul also had the second highest debut ratings in all of cable history. Over 6.5 million viewers tuned in for its first episode on AMC. It still remains one of the highest rated shows on TV and Netflix today. Now for some awaited shows on Netflix in 2022. This year is set to be packed with Netflix releases, including originals, documentaries, and a couple other films and television shows that Netflix has just earned rights to. To start it off, a few Mission Impossible movies will now be available on the streaming platform in 2022, just as the world awaits the newest release from the Mission Impossible franchise. Netflix will also add The Amazing Spider-Man to their collection, along with a few other already released films. June 7th on the streaming platform will mark the expansion of Netflix's already large comedy collection with the release of That's My Time with David Letterman, in which the talk show host invites stand-up comedians for a chat and gives them the opportunity to perform a set as well. Six episodes long, every episode features one comedian, with names such as Rosebud Baker, Phil Wang, Sam Morrill, Brian Simpson, Robin Tran, and Naomi Ekparrigan already in the lineup. If you were wondering why the beloved Adam Sandler had disappeared, wonder no longer as he also makes his return to films and to Netflix with his film Hustle, playing the role of a basketball scout with only one chance to prove to the world that his team has what it takes to make it in the NBA. Seeing Sandler as a basketball scout isn't something that we ever thought we would see, but hey, that is what makes this year such a special one for Netflix. June 10th marks the much-awaited return of Peaky Blinders' sixth and rumored to be last season. Perhaps the most exciting release of this year for most viewers, it marks a dramatic plot line surrounding Tommy's allyship with his sworn enemies as he takes a detour into the opium trade. They say that grief really changes people, but we didn't expect it to change Tommy to this extent. Adding another name into the comedy category, Pete Davidson Presents The Best Friends is also set to be released on June 13th, also in the same style as the Letterman release, featuring multiple comics and performers. On June 14th, viewers will also get to watch Halftime, Jennifer Lopez's heart-touching documentary, whose trailer is making waves worldwide. If fans ever wondered what it would be like to be a part of the superstar's world, well, now they can finally get an insider account into all the hard work that goes on into truly putting on a great show. To top the year off with another original, this year also marks the release of the third season of the much-loved show, The Umbrella Academy. If you like actor Wee Ha Joon in Squid Game, you might also be interested in his next role in the Korean adaptation of Little Women, which is said to be released in August 2022. Finally, Stranger Things star Broadway return. We all know Gaten is loved in Stranger Things on Netflix. His charming smile and witty humor on the show has continued to steal the hearts of many viewers ever since it premiered. Even though this might sound surprising to many, Gaten is also a Broadway actor. He seems to be going back to his roots and is set to make his return on Broadway. Here's what we know so far. He'll be starring in the musical Dear Evan Hansen. How exciting! Matarazzo has been cast for the role of Jared Kleinman. The Tony-winning musical is supposed to be pretty long-running. The first show will be on July 17th. We just can't wait. That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on Better Call Saul and all the fan theories so far? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.